In this video tutorial I'm going to be introducing the trigonometric formulae and more specifically we're going to be looking at compound angle formulas. Now these fall into three different categories. We have the sums, we have the differences and we have the double angle formulae. Now what we're looking at is the equations and information sheet for the trigonometry topic. You do have access to these and I would encourage you to refer back to the formula sheet. Now if we take each of these in turn, first of all the equations involving the sum of an angle. Well, what we mean by a compound angle is when we combine two angles together. So in the case of the sums, we have angle A, we have angle B, and we're taking the sine of the sum of those two angles. What we see on the right-hand side of that equation is an equivalent to sine A plus B. And we'll talk about how we apply that later on. The next sum equation we have is cos A plus B. And once again, we have an equivalent formula involving sine and cosine. The differences are similar except instead of adding the two angles we're taking angle A and we're subtracting angle B and the other difference formula is cos A minus cos B and once again we end up with an equivalent formula involving sine and cos and each of those individual angles A and B, A and B. Now the last category of formulas is the double angle formulas and what we see here is cos 2a. Well cos 2a is basically just cos of a plus a. So it's a variant on the sum formula. And we see directly underneath that sine 2a and once again 2a is basically just a plus a. So we have a variant of this sum formula up here. The important thing is how we apply these and there's actually a technique that we can use. Now if we scroll up on our information and equation sheet, the section above relates to common sine and cosine values. Now some of the important ones on here are when we have a sine or a cosine value that yields answers of 0 and 1. Therefore, if we have an angle of 0, sine of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1. That's an important line there. Another important line is this one here because sine of 90 equals 1 and cos of 90 equals 0. There's two more important ones. We've got sine of 180 is 0, cos of 180 is minus 1, and then finally on the bottom line we've got 360 degrees where sine 360 takes us back to 0 and cos of 360 takes us back to 1. Now we're going to apply these along with our compound angle formula to simplify expressions and also to switch between sine and cosine functions. And I'm going to give you some specific examples now and show you how you would apply the information on the equation and information sheet. So in this example we're going to do the sine of 90 degrees plus an unknown angle thigh. You'll notice here that we're going to be working in degrees and as mentioned previously it's really important that you're clear at the start whether you're working in radians or degrees throughout. So you'll recall from the equation and information sheet that one of the sum formulas said that sine of a plus b is just exactly the same as sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So if we use that sum formula there, we can rewrite our existing formula as sine A, well we're taking A as 90, so we've got sine of 90 times cos of thigh, because thigh is B, and to that we're adding cos of A, so cos of 90 times sine of thigh. Well let's just refer back to our equation and information sheet because sine of 90 and cos of 90 have specific values. We see here 90 degrees, sine of 90 is 1 and cos of 90 is 0. So this is going to have an impact on that formula. Sine of 90 is 1, cos of 90 is 0. Well if cos of 90 is 0 then we're going to have 0 here. 0 times anything is 0. So this term here is going to disappear. And we also just said that sine of 90 is 1. So instead of sine of 90, we're going to replace that with 1. 
So let's simplify this. We've got sine of 90 plus thi is the same as 1 cos thi, which is just cos thi, plus 0, which is just 0. Therefore, sine 90 plus thi is exactly the same as cos of thi. So we've used the sum formula there to switch between sine and cosine. This time we're going to do 3 cos 180 degrees minus 15 degrees. Now one difference here is that we're being given a value of 15 instead of our unknown angle thigh. But the process is going to be exactly the same. First of all we need to identify which trigonometric formula is relevant. And the trigonometric formula that's relevant here is the difference equation that states that cos A minus B is the same as cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So we're going to be applying a formula of that form. The other thing that we notice here is that we have three lots of cos 180 minus 15 or three lots of cos A minus B, which would mean we're going to need three lots of the right-hand side. If you can imagine, if we had three lots of cos A minus B there, then we would need three lots of the right-hand side to keep that equation balanced. So we've got three cos 180 degrees minus 15 degrees equals three lots of cos A. Well, A is 180 degrees. Cos B, well B is 15 degrees, plus sine A, well A is 180 degrees, times sine B, well B is 15 degrees. Just note when we're working with difference formulas, we have a minus here, but we actually have a plus here when we work with cosine. So our next step then is to look to simplify this expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to refer back to our equation and information sheet, and we're going to see what cos of 180 degrees is and sine of 180 degrees is so that we can simplify this. So when we return, we see on this line here that sine 180 degrees is actually 0 and cos 180 degrees is minus 1. So sine 180 is 0, cos 180 is minus 1. Okay, well if sine of 180 is 0, then this term here is 0 Therefore, as anything times 0 is 0, all of this term is going to disappear. Cos of 180 is minus 1. So instead of a cos of 180, we're going to get minus 1. Therefore, 3 cos 180 degrees minus 15 degrees equals 3 times minus 1 cos of 15. Therefore, 3 cos... 180 degrees minus 15 degrees is just minus 3 cos 15 degrees. So we've still ended up with an expression in terms of cos, except this time we have an equivalent expression in terms of minus cos. I'm just going to do one more of these. This time I'm going to use one of the double angle formulas. So let's have 4.5 times sine pi over 2 plus pi over 2. This time we're going to be working in radians. So it's really important, as I said earlier, to be clear on whether you're working in degrees or radians. And in this case, I'm working in radians. So what we have, we have a double angle formula here involving sine. Well, sine 2a from the equation sheet is the same as 2 sine a cos a. Once again, we have four and a half lots of sine pi over 2 plus pi over 2. So we're going to have four and a half lots of our left-hand side and four and a half lots of our right-hand side. Okay, so we get 4.5 sine pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Therefore, we can clearly see that A is pi over 2. That is the same as 4.5 times 2 sine a, or sine pi over 2, 
cos a or cos pi over 2. Next, I'm going to simplify this. So we've got 4.5 sine pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Well, 4.5 times 2 is just 9. So our coefficient is going to become 9. Next, I'm going to look over on my equations and information sheet, and I'm going to see what sine pi over 2 is and what cos pi over 2 is, and see if I can simplify this further. So, we're looking here, angle in radians column. We've got an angle of pi over 2. And we see here that sine pi over 2 is 1, and cos pi over 2 is 0. So returning back, we have sine pi over 2 is 1, but cos pi over 2 is 0. Therefore, we have 9 times 0, which is just 0. So by going through this process, without using a calculator, we've shown that 4.5 sine pi over 2 plus pi over 2 equals 0. Incidentally, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is the same as pi, because pi over 2 is half of pi, pi over 2 is half of pi. So this would be the same as 4.5 sine pi. And as sine of pi is 0, that would give us 0. So there's a number of different ways of applying these, and they have different applications throughout engineering. Just before you start working through the practice questions associated with this topic, it's just worth mentioning one other thing that you'll see in relation to trigonometric formula. And you may or may not have seen this before. You'll see expressions of sine squared theta and cos squared theta. Well, all that means, sine squared theta is just sine theta squared. Okay, so we're taking the value of sine theta and we're squaring it. And the same is true for cos squared theta. Cos squared theta is just the value of cos theta squared. I guess another way of looking at that would be to represent it as cos theta cos theta. Because cos theta cos theta is also cos squared theta or cos theta squared. These all mean the same thing. So sine squared theta, when you see that, is basically sine theta squared. And cos squared theta, when you see that, is basically cos theta squared. It's just that the notation is slightly different from perhaps what you're used to seeing.